Dear brothers and sisters, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today, Mark tells us that the brothers and sisters, or in short, relatives of Jesus, they came and seized him. They came and took him home because they were thinking that he was crazy. Mark was very blunt about this, that they thought that Jesus was out of his mind. They were worried, of course, because Jesus' way of life was different from what they expected. You know, every family usually have expectations from your family members and all that. And when the person begins to live outside what you expected, you may think the person is crazy. <laughs> but of course, we are going to reflect on the different reasons, about six reasons. I'm going to give you six reasons why the family of Jesus thought he was crazy. Yeah, he had a family. Jesus is the second person in the Blessed Trinity. As a second person, he had two natures, divine and human. Now, the family of Jesus, they were worried. Just like every other family will be worried when their child is doing something contrary to what is normal. Yes, Jesus was living a very strange life. But we are going to talk about that, as I said. But the fact is this, that when you look at really what happened, you understand clearly that Jesus had a mission. He was just after the fulfillment of that mission. But the family cared so much. I know that you know. It's not the person who is running mad. Like when you see a mad person walking through the streets. The mad person is not the one who feels the shame. Those who feel the shame are the family members. Because the mad person is happy in his or her own world. He or she does not care what any other person thinks about his or her situation. But those who feel the shame are the members of the person's family. His or her relatives. So in this case also, you can see that feeling that, oh, our son is, is something else now. We have to go and help him. And for me, this is quite didactic because as families, we should never abandon our family member. We should always be there for them. If you look, you know, in a positive you know, way at what happened, you will see that they had good intention. The good intention was to rescue Jesus from what they thought was a wrong way of living. But even though they did not understand really what was going on, of course, Jesus followed them. <laughs> but the fact is this, dear brothers and sisters, that as families, we should never abandon our family member. They say that family is love. No matter the way you're living your life, no matter the way someone is living his or her life, families should be the last places to forgo of someone. We should never abandon our family member. I'm repeating this many times because I've seen people who gave up on their brother, on their sister, simply because you don't understand the way the person is living his or her life. I believe that what the family of Jesus did today is an act of solidarity. They love Jesus. They love him. They did not want him to go astray because they were thinking he was going astray in their own human ignorance, in their own human understanding, if you want to put it in a positive way. But I'm going to mention like six things, as I said, that really prompted the family, the relatives of Jesus, to go out looking for him and to seize him to bring him back. The first one is that he abandoned his father's profession. In the time of Jesus, it was customary, it was traditional that a child would always practice the same trade the father practiced. If you are a teller, it's expected that your child should know how to be a teller or should be a teller. If you are walking in a certain place, like those who are walking in the mall, 
They expected that their children will also take after them. It is still happening even until this day. I know families where you have the husband is a doctor, the, the wife is a doctor, so they always want their children to become doctors. I'm not saying whether it's wrong or right, but the fact is that in the time of Jesus, it was a normal, usual practice that a child should always practice the same business or the same trade that the parents, especially the father, practices. So for Jesus to have abandoned Nazareth and moved over to Capernaum as an itinerant preacher, it was something very unusual. And they thought he was out of his mind. The second reason, dear brothers and sisters, is that Jesus was confronting the powers that be. They saw that Jesus was heading towards a head-on collision. In their own perspective, Jesus was like a little car trying to have a head-on collision with a dump truck, with a trailer. Because the, 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 the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, they were considered as the powers that be. So for Jesus to be confronting them, challenging them, the family of Jesus, they were afraid that he was going to get himself killed. It was like somebody, you know, committing suicide. Colliding with the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, challenging them, confronting them, is like someone writing his or her own, you know, will for suicide. That is the second reason. The third reason, dear brothers and sisters, is that Jesus chose apostles with questionable characters. If you remember yesterday, we read about how Jesus summoned the disciples and from among them, he chose the twelve. If you look at the twelve apostles, you will see that each of them came from a different background. Some of them had questionable backgrounds. I will not mention names, but the fact is that if you take your time to study each of the apostles, you understand that they, some of them had questionable character. For instance, Jesus had someone who was among, who was taken from among the zealots. The zealots are like the fundamentalists. The zealots are like the extremists. Yet, Jesus included such persons among his inner carcass, his apostles. So the people of Jesus, the family of Jesus, they were thinking that it's crazy. How can he, you know, in his right senses, associate himself with this kind of people who have questionable character? If you are a parent or parents, guardians, and you see your child associating with someone you know that has a very bad reputation, someone who is notorious, will you keep your mouth shut and not call the attention of that your family member? You see, Jesus chose people who had this kind of terrible, bad pasts. And the family, they were worried. Number four, the reason, the possible reason why the family of Jesus came and seized him thinking he was mad, is that he surrounded himself with sinners. You know, people who were considered as publicans, as sinners, Jesus was seen eating, talking, conversing, interacting with them. And his family said, oh, this is too much. This is really too much. So Jesus surrounded himself with sinners, with outcasts, with prostitutes, with tax collectors, with publicans, with people that were abandoned, those who were rejected. Look at two days ago, we read about people coming all the way from Tyre and Sidon, a Gentile territory. And the typical Jew would not like to, 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 to have anything to do with a Gentile. But here comes Jesus, who calls himself, or who is called a rabbi, yet he was welcoming, you know, Gentiles. It was strange for his family members. Number five, Jesus did not care about himself. As you see in the gospel today, Mark tells us that he had no time to eat. I remember visiting my brother in Nigeria and I discovered that he's always out, 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 you know, for his business, you know, 
At the time, I had to call him and say, I'm going to seize your car key today. You will not go to work, you know, if you don't take your breakfast. Because I will always go to morning mass. When I return, I discover that the, the breakfast that the wife prepared and set for him, he did not eat it. He will only eat his breakfast when he comes home. Come on, oh boy. You have to eat before you go. Breakfast is a very important meal. It's a foundational meal. And the Bible tells us, of course, Mark did not tell us which meal that Jesus did not eat. But the fact is that he didn't even have time for himself. And this reminds me of the memorial we are celebrating today, St. Agnes. Agnes comes from the word Agnus, and Agnus means lamb. Jesus came to sacrifice himself, to sacrifice his time, to give his attention, to heal those who are sick. That's why he came. And he is our lamb. As John will say, Eche Agnus Dei, Eche Quitolis Pecata Mundi. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold he who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus spent his time, he spent his life for the people. And eventually, he gave up his life on the cross for you and for me. So he didn't care about himself. Rather, he cared about the well-being and the welfare of other people, of you, of me. And finally, the sixth reason why the family of Jesus thought he was out of his mind is because of the content of his teachings. Jesus was teaching something basically different from what other rabbis and teachers thought. And his family members, of course, they were wondering, what kind of man is this? Why is he teaching our people to love their enemies? The enemies at this moment, at this time, were basically the Romans. How can Jesus teach the people to love the Romans? It was something that is abominable. So dear brothers and sisters, if you really want to be a Christian, you have to love. I have to love. If we do not love until that moment that people would think we are crazy by loving our enemies, then we are not Christians yet. What makes us Christians really is to go out of our way. You know, when you fall in love, when a, when, when a young girl falls in love with someone you never expected or the family never expected, they will be thinking the young girl is crazy. But love is actually crazy. If you are not crazy... You are not loving. So dear brothers and sisters, let us ask the Lord to grant us the grace we need in order to live a life of service, to live a sacrificial life, to be courageous enough to give ourselves. It's a life of kenosis. That's what it means to be a Christian. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 6 and following, St. Paul said he emptied himself. We have to empty ourselves for our husbands, for our wives, for our family, for our children, for our neighbors. Unless we empty ourselves, we cannot really say that we are Christians. May God bless you. And please, do well to share this video. Thank you.